in the bottom right his first appearance on the very 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 big stage of european warcraft it's the absolute underdog of this group but maybe he can surprise us all it's cooper And in the upper right, doing already kind of a greedy creep spot, if I can say it myself like that, it is Cash. And Cooper is actually do doing pretty decent on ladder. He's rank 9 in Master, so that's basically rank 39 in total. And I think Cash is at around 58. So they've both been fairly active. Cash has been training Night Elf on ladder, and it does make a lot of sense here for him to be playing Elf. He's been playing quite a bit of Human as well recently. So like, I think from series to series, he's likely to start changing races depending on how confident he feels in every matchup. But yeah, as we thought it was going to be, it is a Blade Master here. And it feels like a risky creep to go for this camp here for Cash. But I mean, he knows that Cooper plays Blade Master and might be getting aggressive, and he's even scouting here. He might have bought doing the shop because he gets scouted actually. Yeah, I think so too. And this might be a wrong start into the game for Cash. As you said, everyone knows that Cooper is playing Blade Master, but not only does he play a lot of Blade Master, he's also very, very, very good. I think he's kind of comparable to Xiao KK in China when, oh no, misses the last, oh, there we go. When um, his Blade Master control, really good. His grunt control, also really good, but then, even after he dominates an early game, he oftentimes falls off in the mid and late game stages when it's about map control and bigger armies. By the way, I just saw the Cooper photo. Oh my god, this guy looks big. <laughs> he does. What's up with these Russians hitting the gym? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Hawk yesterday. Well, Cash is kind of the opposite of that. <laughs> so another styles clash right here. Cash is, uh, is bulking a little bit at first. Too. That's what you need, right? So Cooper already got a Wand of Illusion here. That's going to be nice for scouting. A player's forces are I wonder what composition... Oh, he's actually trying to steal a camp away, but Cooper's going to be on... Like, Cooper, like, we talk about the Blend Master, like, you know... One of the biggest things about playing Blend Master is that you need to have a GPS in your mind. So, like, you need to be really good about finding the opponent, scouting for where they're at, and... If you're able to get, like, a lot of wind walks like this, you steal creeps and items, you just propel yourself into the mid game in such a beautiful position and that's what he's counting on here that was really wonderful by koopa he got the last hit he got both of the treants so all of a sudden he's at 136 ex experience points and he's out leveling cash a lot who definitely has some issues here to get to level two so no entangle no control of the blade master and of course no lockdown against the grunts and this enables cooper to Creep quite a bit bolder, I guess, to move out a little bit of the map. Like, not going to these tiny little green spots. He has nothing to be afraid of at the moment. Yeah, he has a very good rhythm as well. You saw he harassed a little bit, stole some... Oh my god, the illusion! <laughs> <laughs> Trapped in a cage! By the way, double one of illusion. Who needs mirror image? A player's force Who needs mirror image? Attack. Well, it's kind of good to get out of uh, entangles, right? Not possible with the wand of illusion. He could have killed a tent, by the way. Set him free! Hashtag free the blade. Free Jubei. <laughs> free Jubei. <laughs> and the interesting thing about Cash here to me is not a single Huntress. Like he's going straight for Archer, which is kind of the thing that Ark did yesterday as well. Yeah. In the American games. He pulled the camp. Oh my god. A player's he accidentally a brought the creeps from the expo oh, here. Oh my god, no. he's gonna take so much damage! No. <laughs> he can't They're staying here. He can tank a, a little with the illusion. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, heal self that he needs. Gets a soapy mask for it, and the second hero will be super th uh, thankful for it. The Drew Bay illusion could have helped. <laughs> Cash on the other side, creeping himself, uses the dust to make sure the blade's not around to steal that big Magi. Gets a potion of invuln. Always nice to have a little bit of protection extra. And yeah, Cooper's already level 3 and he's got a Sobi mask, so now, the, now is where, where the real game begins. Yeah, absolutely. He has to fear Entangle a little bit as it's unlocked now. Oh, as we can see on the Illusion, quite a mistake, maybe a little too early. Now we got Windwalk, we got level 3 exactly as you mentioned, so longer duration. We get the Alchemist and this is the typical Knight of mid-game play. Keeper and 
Alchemist trying to steal some major eyes away to get the big consumables in the middle. We see this here on Last Refuge. We see this also on Northern Isles. But this was so obvious that Cooper is obviously here. Catches an acid bomb, but that's not the biggest deal. He used the Windwalk, kills an archer. And this just so many archers. Yeah. It's good damage. I mean, he doesn't have a claw or something. It's just a circlet. But with Windwalk and maybe one or two crits. Good control here, though, with the Entangle. Yeah, go for one more. And Cash is rushing tier 3, by the way. He's only making archers off of the one inch interpore. He's going to lose another one. This is big. You're losing two archers. Like, he only had six in total initially. So he's down to four. Obviously, he's going to be making more. We got the Huntress all on the way now behind this. And Cooper, I feel like he's in a pretty good spot here. Like, he's getting Totem behind this. He's getting Bestiary. I think he was able to see that in the main there was nothing special. So he knows that he's just pure archers for now. Yeah, it is Raider Walker, probably, and maybe a Kodo in between. We see the Walker right here. Yesterday, when we saw Kiwi Kaki play against this Mass Archer style, he was very adamant of going Tauren. That is very position dependent, of course, but what do you like better, the Tier 3 Orc to counter it with, like, heavy machinery in, in Tauren, or the typical Raider Walker style? I think uh, I kind of like what Cooper's doing, like... It just goes perfectly uh, with this style. It's been played for a very long time. He's got so much experience with it. So I like that he's staying tier 2 and just playing Grand Raider Walker. I think those make a lot of sense. This blade is, I think, the most fun that a blade could ever have in the game, it feels like. Especially with that Sobi mask. Oh, he did. Oh my god. He's going to go for the kill. He detonated, so he drained mana away from the blades. And there's not going to be enough mana on time to windwalk, I think. He's going to lose oh, the blade master. But the surround wasn't there. He needs another detonate, and he gets it off. Oh, 50 mana gone. He was barely on the threshold. A tenth of a second more. And he has that sweet 75 mana, especially with the Sobi mask. But yeah, first big mistake by Kufba. Maybe a little too confident after this early game. And by the way, like you were talking about Kiyukaki going for a... Uh torrents like to counter his opponent what his opponent was doing i don't yeah. think kibikaki cares what his opponent is doing i'm pretty sure you could go <laughs> open mass griffins and he still would go torrents and still beat you but <laughs> Yeah, the, the, miracle, unit. the miracle of Kiwi Kaki, man. Yesterday we saw demolishers with burning oil against Night Elf once again. Like, if you're, if you want some off-meta strategies, the NA scene and especially Kiwi Kaki is for you. Oh my God, he's going for the altar before the third here is off. And Cash really messed up on that bottom right camp. He summoned only one single trance. Oh wow. By accident, and then that died instantly from the camp. He's gonna TP with a very low hit points. <laughs> what? <laughs> never mind. There was never an alchemist. Just okay. gets melted instantly. How is he gone so quickly? The TP just arrived and Cooper, killer instinct, going for that second hero. And that's big because that was a big part of Cash's healing. Look at the moon juice. There's nothing left. Yeah, the Legion is supposed to be very good here. Cash doesn't have any staff. The bottom gets caught. And Cooper, spelling blood in the water here, is pressuring very heavily. He's going to speed scroll to try and get that priestess. Those cash maybe denies the experience by sending it into a camp. Or well, maybe able to escape. Okay, she does, but she's far away and she's supposed to provide an aura, which doesn't really work when you're on the opposite side of the map. So you need a new idea here. Poor he buys stuff. He can buy stuff from the shop. But he has to realize it's been crapped. Yeah. It's safe to go there. The alchemist is on its way back. Detonate lands. Still enough mana on the shadow for at least one single heal. Every spell or every ability that Cooper is using looks like it results in a kill. Like, we see it again. It's Ensnare, it's Hex. Everything results in a kill. So, of course, an Archer kill isn't the biggest of deals, but this engine of war position really hurts Cash now as Cooper is standing in the middle of the Night of Production building and the main base. So, how do you reunite your army? The answer is you don't. And Cash is just constantly bleeding in this match. Yeah, he's been struggling for a while. He didn't even have time to use the Book of the Dead. That would have helped so much in his main base because there weren't even necessarily any disenchant, I think, at the time, too. So Entangled could have done really well with yeah. enough units to tank the damage and also do All damage to the army of his opponent. But attack. Cooper's playing so aggressive. He does not want to allow Cash to get any production facilities. There is not even a cancel here on that shop. Cash is running back home. Cooper's not going to give him any time. He's saying, I already cut your production earlier. I'm, I'm going to kill you right now. Yeah, and with archers, it's kind of the uh, 
same thing as with all the piercing damage range. Oh, we gotta take care of this Blade Master here. There is a big Invul Potion. Heal scroll first. There's the Invul. Goes for the Alchemist once again. But there's a small Invul Potion for that Knight of Second Hero as well. But the bottom is kind of exposed. Heal Wave is ready for the Blade Master, who's very, very close to level 4. Grunts take care of these archers one after the next. And there's no chance for cash anymore. First win for Koopa. Worst Book of the Deads. Eh. He just used that and instantly there was a disenchant and it was just free <laughs> XP. Like, that was so bad. Unfortunate game for Cash, but you know, we talked about it. Cooper plays Blame Master. He's very good with it. So, I already kind of am questioning the greedier attempt at creep creeping the shop in the center. Yes. But who knows? Maybe Cash might have played against Cooper on ladder and then Cooper didn't scout and just went to creep a little bit and then played aggressive. So, he was like, if I can get away with the shop, that's a great creep route advantage that I can get, because I can get level 2, get a big consumable. But no, he scouts, sees it, that has to be aborted immediately, and then it's very awkward, because you have your Ancient of War towards the center of the map. But that's not really achieving much for you, and you're creeping very slowly as well. Yeah, it was uh, pretty much the one of the decisions, if not the biggest decision in the game there, I think, uh, going for the early game creep route. There is a argument for going for this greedy one like even if you go for the conservative creep route you still don't get level two and you still might be stuck on level one for a really long time so why not risk something that is the argument for it but the counter argument is the orc build normally always is every single time always is on lr be aggressive right away go scouting and harass him so it was a weird decision Maybe Cooper had been playing Creeping first in their previous games. Cash banked on that. But that was a heavy punish. And that's where I think uh, you can see that Cash on a Night Elf main, where other Night Elves would find ways to recover. Law, Light, and Moon would come up with something brilliant, some creep route, some way to get level 3, get back into the game. But if you're not so familiar with Night Elf, it's very hard to do. And now I'm looking at the maps, and this for me... Spells a little bit of a disaster for Cash because Last Refuge was Cash's map and now Cooper picks Twisted Meadows. Yeah, uh, with Twisted Meadows can be very tough to creep on uh, very early on. And like we saw, then again, I mean, if you're Cash now, you know pretty much exactly what to expect, right? Blade Master, early on aggression. So he can already start picking a build order that he thinks is going to be good against that. But what's really good against that if he can't creep at all? Yeah, that might be an issue for sure. So what strategy do we see nowadays uh, in this matchup on Twisted? I'm kind of torn. Like, Keeper Hans is kind of dominating. That could be decent with mass expansions. Remo, do you have any idea? Um, yeah, Twisted is a fascinating map in this matchup. I think it comes down a lot to the players themselves. Like, there are some orcs who really like playing this map aggressively against certain Night Elves, being very abusive, being really oppressive in the early game and making use of the strength of Heal Scrolls and just beefy orc units and the fact that Night Elf can't creep so well. But then again, there's other Night Elves where every orc doesn't dare to go up against them on this map, like Moon, like Lawliot, who are so crafty and just genius in their map movement and... Uh, late game expansion play and i would say a more seasoned night elf will always be better here someone with more experience and knowing how to play a late game and again that is not exactly cash's night elf as it is his offerings all right then this of i'm gonna course... stick to my prediction regardless <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what Remo said. That's the spirit, Todd. That's what I'm doing for five years. <laughs> <laughs> this map, of course, uh, as you guys pointed out, a lot to creep, a lot of items. And with that, a little bit of luck, a little bit of RNG comes into play here as well. But let's go step by step. The starting positions are really important. The item drops are really important. But most important, of course, what do the players decide to go for? What's their execution like? And for Koopa, Last Refuge looked really good. Like this start at the green spot where Cash was trying to trick him. That didn't work out because Koopa's Blade Master Control is once again so damn good. We load into map number two, Twisted Meadows. And there we have him trailing former... Top four in Europe, but now diving a little bit in the ranks. In the bottom left, as Night Elf once again, it's Cash. 
You know, I was convinced that Knopf was the best buff bald orc in Europe, but no, I feel like I've been bamboozled because Cooper, clearly, I had never seen a picture of him and he's pretty damn good as well. He's pretty damn good and he starts in the upper right, that means close position. Here is Cooper's intro. All right, then the rock music is off. Cross position it is, Todd. What does this say about the matchup here now that we have no close position and no close spawn to a mercenary camp? Well, obviously, it's, there's a longer rush distance, but in terms of creep route, which is exactly what's super important here and how, Cooper, how aggressive Cooper would play, it looks like Cooper may be going for a trick here on the lab to try and pull it and kill it early. So we predicted he was going to play aggressive. It looks like Cash didn't even dare going for an Ancient of War on the map because he thought that his opponent might be aggressive and he might be opening hunts or something here. And build otherwise, this could be way better for Cooper if he can pull it off. If he gets the creep, the item, and the experience, like, in my opinion, that's going to be pretty damn good for him. But can that happen? We got cash scouting. He's going to be seeing it here in just a moment. And obviously, he's going to be harassing because he opens... Uh, I mean, maybe he gets trance and creeps, but I don't think so. I think he's probably going to be running out on the map trying to find his opponent, preventing him from creeping and just kind of doing the dance. Yeah, he will find his opponent in the upper right now. And once he sees the building positioning, then he knows exactly what's up. The question is, will you arrive in time? In case you're not too familiar with Twisted Metals and Orc play. Oh, wow, he cancels this. As he sees, is, does he? Oh, no, he pulls it again. So this is definitely time for Cash to arrive. Wake up. Here we go. Okay, you pull the creeps. You use the... Blade Master as a stopper, as the unit can pass through him here with Windwalk. That was really well executed so far. Like sometimes yeah. on some positions we see the Rock Golem bugging out a little and then it doesn't work. Can he steal it? Cash. He goes Triance. for Triance for extra damage and he gets the experience. Oh, oh my god. That... That's more than half a level. 120 XP out of 200. That's so much. That's so much. This prevents the level 3 Blade Master for a long time. He's still kind of happy about this as he gets the Scourge Bone Chimes, one of the best items for Orcs for, I don't know, decades by now. And it even got buffed. It is now 20% lifesteal, especially for a Blade Master. That's pretty damn sweet. And you know, Cash opening hunts on this map, I'm getting uh, almost a little bit tingly wingly here. I'm like, well, not we're not going to get a Blood Castle, but we're going to get... Some hit and run, I think, and some expos everywhere. Like, if you go for hunts like this, you can just go for moon glaives on tier two, get a lot of huntresses, and then just play that moon style. You just keep going for the base, you just keep expanding and attacking your opponent and just kind of base trading and TPing all over the place. And I think that's the plan here. Just play it moon style, huh? It sounds so easy the if you say it that way. Are under attack. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay. There's just nobody else that ever did it because they didn't try. <laughs> Cash will be the first one. <laughs> For sure. Cooper with a nice trick on the rock column again, getting the mercenaries here with that. He has dispel against the possible entangle or of course the treants and the creeps don't use their spells, so that's fairly easy to creep. So he gets a little firepower, he gets dispel, he gets healing, and he gets a big item from this camp. I like that choice. Yeah, Vampiric is pretty nice for creeping here for sure. It's gonna help him power level to level three, and I'm pretty sure that behind this. It's gonna be the same as last game, you know, 1-1-1, one, 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 Shadow into second. I mean, because he's against Hunts, there's a chance he plays slightly differently. Like, sometimes you can skip the totem and play just with more Raiders and then try and hit and run yourself and make sure you can catch the opponent down on the map. And yeah, we got the first Tree of Life at the bottom. What second hero will Cash go for? Usually it's an Alchemist here almost every single time, but he can mix in different ones. A player's forces yeah. are under attack. What else could it be? Could be a Naga, potentially? Could be I a think demon hunter? sometimes Panda, but yeah, realistically, it's supposed to be an Alchemist. An AP in the main base of Cooper. Yeah, right sneaky, sneaky. So that's really cool. As Cash, the six o'clock position, is planting a tree of life to get a second base up. And to protect that, you have to keep Cooper kind of busy, even though this map is super big. And of course, it's cross position. But with that AP, you make sure that he's in the base. And that keeps your expansion um, clean and also attack. gives you more time to creep. And Cash made Sentinel, by the way. So he's actually going to have detection now on the map without having to use the dust necessarily. Like, that helps a lot. Spotting the movement of the orc, seeing what the Blade Master is in particular. Like, obviously, you can remove the Sentinels, but it's not always super easy to spot them. You need to send a peon on the map and then just hit that tree one time. 
But yeah, the AP's finished. He's not moving it yet, but he might get spotted. Oh, it's oh my god, Cash. Okay, he attacks the units now, so... We see this... Ladies uh, 3. Okay, Windwalk is good. That took a little longer. The inventory is amazing, by the way, with the slippers and the potion. He got really good drops so it's far. Trapped. Free Jubei! Free Kigami. <laughs> is it Kigami now? Yes, it is. But, you know, he's dealing with these creeps. He's healing up in the meantime. He is keeping Cash busy. And it is oh, an alchemist. That was level 3 just denied, attack. by the way, by stealing this silver oh, null. Oh, sweet. And he still has a lot of mana. I think he's going to keep on working on this Keeper, maybe. Like, not having Entangled level 2 is a little bit disastrous here for Cash. He's trying to get that. Will the Blade step in? No. He really wants to heal. I think it's a good timing for Cash to go and creep the Expo at the bottom. But sometimes here, it's very tempting to attack. And then when you finally have to TP, you just TP out and creep the Expo. But in this case, the AP is already going down. So I think he's just going to go straight for the Expo. And Cooper is stalking him. Okay, how long can he follow? With a little bit of multitasking required, taking the AP out in the main base. We see the first Serpent Ward as he's now facing... What? As he's now the facing uh, Huntress. There's attack. a Demolisher. That's Who plays happens, Demolishers? When you watch Kiwi Kaki's games, you <laughs> automatically start making those without even realizing. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain just tells you, hey, it looks really good, but the difference is yeah. that Kiwikaki played it on tier 3 with burning oil. And this is only tier 2 so far, but of course a good solution against buildings, as long as you keep them safe. Alright, the Blade Master. That Sentinel is so sick down there. He's actually going for some nice target fire here. Dust was already used, so he's detected. Also, the Owl is super beautiful. Here in Reforged, well done. And the Dragon is down. Ring of Regeneration, nothing really to do for Koopa. And he realizes it as well with all the detection, with Poison Ivy combo. And he's creeping up himself now towards level 3. And he's also expanding in the north. Actually, like usually I, I use that expression to uh, after fights to point out the big supply difference. But look at the supply. Cooper is not really... Doing too well with production is only at 40, and that's because he expanded at the top and Our rushed for 45 to be safe are under against potential hit and run from his opponents. Plus two attack is already on the way for Cash. Oh my god. Whoa. These Huntresses are gonna hurt. It, did he get Moonglaive yet? Uh, no, not yet. Just Sentinel. It's also not in production, but I like what Cooper is doing with the Blade Master here, despite, like, he's not moving the entire army to the south and tries to kick the Tree of Life. He's expanding on the other side of the map, and the Blade Master can keep this Entangled Gold Mine down. And he can probably spend his entire game here just canceling the Gold Mine over and over. Well, he doesn't have that much mana. Like, we saw what happened last game if you get caught. Like, Entangled Level 2 is still pretty scary. So he needs to be careful. Oh yeah, Cash, 41 supply, he's Players getting uh, improved bows, he's gonna go into Archers here, he's got enough hunts already. And Cooper's going for the Creep Jack, he's one bit of experience away on his Shadow to get level 3. Keeper is being, uh, sorry, uh, Blade Master is being targeted, Invuln available on him, he's gonna delay that, and that's gonna be level 3 Shadow here. Alright, there was a, an Invuln potion on the Alchemist as well, Cooper played passively enough to save his big potion of invulnerability for the big fight, so I really like what he does. And now the Null Overseer to the Blade Master, which could potentially be a Claw. It's gloves, but man, this inventory is looking hot. You got the Claw plus 9, you got the slippers, you got the gloves. It's getting scary for Cash, if you ask me. Like, the Huntress, they don't have too much value anymore with these level 2, well, with these Serpent Wards, and a lot of healing, of course, coming from the Blade Master as well. He's going for the Alchemist once again. So many crits! Oh my god, another one! Cooper Saint Sword maybe forced into the invul potion now. There was big healing on this alchemist, so it's safe. But how greedy he is! Now, still the big invul, not committed. The heal wave is saving him over and over. What a smart choice to go for that level two. Yeah, he wants to make sure the blade goes really low. At the last second, he could use the invul and then use a salve immediately on the blade so he can regenerate while this is keeping him unharmed. But... Uh, Cash really struggles in this fight right now. This maybe wasn't the best time for him to fight. Like, Alchemist wasn't level 3 yet. He's had to use a lot more items. But now Cooper is in an awkward position because he doesn't have much mana on the Shadow Hunter. He has just a single heal. He can't even use Serpent Wards here. If he uses that, he's saving mana right now for the heal. He doesn't even have uh, any Purge to remove that Entangle here. 
true. That could Wisp be coming in. Well, that could be big. And it is big. Absolutely no mana. But he gets a double kill on the Huntress and on an Archer. So he slays this army. But he can't keep up the pressure for much longer. As you said, that Shaman mana is absolutely necessary now. Cash had so many hunts and now he's got the single one left and it's not even really that high on hit points. He's in a world of trouble here. Cooper playing so aggressive. He's ignoring the army. He's targeting the building in front of him. <laughs> I like that. That takes away potions. That takes away more stabs. But I also love this acid bomb here into the back line. Level 4 for the Blade Master, which is a way bigger critical strike. And we saw these big red numbers. They will be even bigger here. Nice micro on the Shaman, saving it from the melee range Alchemist. And he always has a heal self ready. But I feel like he has to evacuate sooner than later. Yes, he's trading. But... His units are tier 2 units, and he's only getting archers for it. But he doesn't care! Yeah, Cash really has 3 wind wells in his main base, because a big part of what he's out of 50 supplies, that second tree, so... Now having lost the shop, he hasn't remade that. He's got so many units queued in the uh, Ancient of Wars! <laughs> he really should have had a wisp at the Merc camp, because buying some mercenaries here could have helped a lot in those fights, and Cooper is just... Happy trading because his heroes keep on leveling. If you reach 5-5 five, five here in this matchup with Blade Master and Shadow Hunter, you're in a great spot. He can just solo this keeper because it's raining crits. Oh boy. It's so hard to heal against it. Here comes the purge. Here comes the hex. That's the end. Keeper gone. And maybe the first big upset of the tournament as the underdog Cooper is having such a lead. 47 supply. He was close to 1,200 gold for a second. He's trying to get the Keeper back at the Tavern, but of course no mana anymore. Does he have anything to pop on the Shadow Hunter? Not really, but he got more crowd control in Purge. He is bloodthirsty now, trying to TP out. And it does work. Cash prolongs his life, but everything is looking real grim for Cash. Yeah, Cooper with a great decision to go for the shop now, because he needs to heal in his clarity on his Shadow Hunter, so it's a great way to just go and creep something here where it's not really going to do that much damage to his units either. Get an extra item and then go for more pressure. Like, I'm pretty sure he's just doing so well in this game. Oh. Chair 3 is about to finish. He's finally adding a bestiary. He's going to be able to get a Kodo. A Are we going to see the rah rah rah? <laughs> I think we have to get Remo on for the perfect uh, uh, impression, but you got real close, Todd. So, did you it's see cute. this? Did, did the, oh boy, Remo, get ready over there. Did you see this inventory of the Blade Master now after the shop creep? It's insane. He got boots of Keltalas. Yeah. He got claws plus nine. He gets slippers. He will get an orb soon. He got gloves. He's gonna add Kodos maybe. This Blade Master is absolutely out of control. You know how they say like, don't be jealous of uh, anyone else's success. <laughs> yes. I'm so jealous of his inventory though. <laughs> <laughs> Cash found a true shot, by the way. Definitely the best item he could have had here. Okay, or so he can massively ranged army. Yeah, he can pretty much skip the bottom with that now. She's of course a great orb carry, but Cash never got into a situation where the triple orb really becomes important. So what yeah, there is nature's blessing, so this tree won't die that fast. But against that big an army. I don't think Cash will have too much time. It looks like he might try to run. No, he's getting in position to TP. Okay, there we go. Where does he TP? Left side, I think, is safe. Mirror image already used. Okay. Wisp coming in. Very important. He needs this, a lot of those here. Is this the last stand for Cash? We look at the Blade Master and we see, okay, at the moment he's a little disabled with another Poison Ivy. All the damage raining onto the Blade. Critical Strike for 120. He would love to get that sweet high-level crit. So far, so good. More dispels against the Shaman. Cash is doing that nicely. Also, a lot of heal. But, man, Cooper knows only one direction. That's forward. Yeah, the Shamans. Like, a lot of them are out of mana, but there's still a good amount on the rest. Alkin oh. is getting targeted. He's going to go down. He no, wanted to... Leave me for Bloodlust, please. That was so unlucky by Cash. He wanted to transfer the staff, and that didn't work. Oh, my. There was the Hex, and that is... The 2-0 for Cooper.